Hi y'all, um, I was just gonna hop on here to do a, another small little vlog um, so I can look back on and to see if I can help anybody else going through um, gastrically bariat bari bleh, bariatric surgery. Um, I recently just went through my behavior health evaluation. Um, I can say that I have been recommended to a therapist by my uh, regular doctor. I've set up appointments plenty of times and then cancel a couple of days before or the day of because my I have anxiety in a very very moderate um, social anxiety. Um, I obviously couldn't cancel this one because that would put me back and I wouldn't be approved for my surgery. So obviously it wasn't an option for me. Um, my insurance company didn't um didn't cover certain ones i had the one office that they used they called me and told me they couldn't they set up the appointment and then told me like the next day they called and said oh your insurance doesn't cover this we're gonna have to cancel your appointment i'm like okay now what do i go from here and she's like we'll call your insurance so i called them they gave me a list of 12 different people and out of those 12 people, only one person did evaluations, they said, for bariatric. I don't understand what the difference really is that much, but I thought any therapist could do it. Guess not. Uh, I made the appointment. Then the bariatric office called me and said they had one on site that my insurance is covered so I called and canceled the other appointment and then scheduled with them and I was so beyond grateful because it was with a female her name was Katie I was still nervous um I have like I have the social anxiety but if it's a male it amps it up even more I get very nervous and I feel more judgmental by men um it's very, very annoying. Um, that's why I canceled my other therapist appointments because they were all males. Um, and on top of it, I don't like talking about myself. It's not something that I'm really into. Um, I'm more of a listener and try to fix other people's problems and put myself on the back burner. Um, but obviously this wasn't going to allow me to do that. I have to put myself first. That's what this whole journey is about. Putting my health and my physical, mental, emotional, all that health before others. And I actually went to a support group because they recommend you doing at least one. But... I would get as many as possible because I've only been to one so far last month and I'm getting ready to go to another one actually tomorrow. Um, they talked about um, sabotagers, not yourself, but others, enablers type thing. Um, it was very helpful because there was people that was pre-op like me. Um, there was people post up by three months. There was someone that was about a year out, two, three year outs, and one that was five years out. So having all the different views of the different time frames of the surgery was great. And all their opinions and experiences were actually very helpful. Um, but the teacher that, well, the teacher of the support group was actually going to be my therapist, Katie. So I got to meet her before sitting in a small room with her to talk about myself.
and that helps me out so much as soon as I got home I was like I got to meet Katie my therapist I'm going to next week I feel so relieved and I was able to walk in there shake her hand and just talk about everything um you had to do like a questionnaire it's two different questionnaires front and back um one was for anxiety one was for depression um it was questions like in the past week or two um did you um try to think have little interest or pleasure in doing things that you like uh feeling down depressed hopeless um trouble falling asleep staying asleep or sleeping too much um tired having little energy feeling nervous or on edge um feeling bad about yourself uh feeling like a failure to yourself or to family um Not being able to stop or control worrying, trouble relaxing, um, I'm trying to think what else, becoming annoyed, irritable, being restless, hard to sit still, um, different questions like that. It was probably close to 20 each and you had to scale it from one, zero, one, two, and three, I believe it was. Um, once she went over everything with me, she said I had moderate, um, anxiety and mild depression, but she said the way the questionnaire is, the answers that I gave for the depression isn't really considered depression. It's more an anxiety and she thinks if I do have depression, it's very minimal, but my anxiety, it seems like it can be a little overwhelming at times, which when she asked me, I told her I was depressed before. Um, I got out of that. That was when I was in my first marriage and it became abusive and very mentally, emotionally draining. Um... But once I got with my second husband, it was like the light of the tunnel. Like I wasn't um, wasn't as anxious anymore. wasn't um, as social anxiety that I had as much. Um, I had social anxiety to the point where. I couldn't go to the store alone. I'd have like, I call it a safety blanket, my mom, my dad, my children, somebody with me. If I had to go alone and I went to check out and it was only a male checkout or the line was long and I knew people would pile up behind me, I would leave. I would put my, go back. I would put all my stuff back where it belonged. I don't like people that just leave a cart or whatever and just throw stuff on the shelf. I went back, put everything away, and I just leave. And I come back when I'm able to go with somebody else. Um, she told me that she recommended that I would go to another support group. And I told her, no problem. The one I went to was amazing. I'll probably go to more than just the one more that she recommended. I'm going to go as many as possible. Um, she asked about like how, um, how my relationship is with my mom, my relationship with my father, do I have any siblings, how are my relationships there, past relationships, um, current relationship, so I had to tell them that like, my parents, most amazing parents ever, so supportive, always been there, they're my best friends, I talk to them every single day. And I see them multiple times a week, if possible. Um, my brother, I don't really have any contact with him. Every once in a while now, this um, since 2019, he did wish me like a happy birthday, which he hasn't done in I don't even know how many years. 
Um, I texted him and wished him happy birthday on his because it's like a month apart. Um, he lives about five hours away from me. Uh, he used to live like 10. <laughs> um, but he moved up with my grandparents and he wasn't, he got married, he has three kids, him and his wife got into drugs and things and heroin and all that kind of stuff. So the relationship died. He was like my best friend before. Like we did everything together and we would hang out and we used to go camping and we'd spend time together with all of our friends. But and then we kind of just lost that with his drug addiction and his alcohol addiction um now he is recently out of jail and he's trying to get his life back on track so he seems like he's trying to make an effort to rekindle all the bridges that he burned during his poor life choices um that conversation did make me tear up a little bit and she said it doesn't seem like you're sad about everything going on you're just you're you're scared for what the outcome could be if he doesn't get his life on track and I told her that's correct like who wants to have to bury their sibling nobody wants to do that not at the age of 27 or close to 27 do I really want to have to bury my brother but then we talked about past relationships and I had to tell them about my abusive relationship and that's the father of both my children and I have to see him three times a week Every other weekend, it's every other, every other week, it's four times a week. So that's very emotionally and mentally draining sometimes because he still tries to control me in certain ways and he tries to be like he's the boss of it all and he's daddy of the year and I'm no good. Um, but I am going to, like I said, do more um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Support groups because like I said, they're very helpful. Um, I actually what they do is they give me a little paper on all the different categories they'll be talking about they have them um, twice a month um one beginning of the month which is from six no from 7 p.m to 8 p.m and then 11 to 12 like two weeks later like in the middle of the month so like in january they did resolutions and getting back on track um, plastic surgery, February, they did physical activity, March, post-surgery intimacy, April, dealing with saboteurs. Um, and that's when I went to, and it was actually really helpful. Um, May, stress management, June, self-sabotage, July, mindful eating, August, body image, September, weight loss plateau, October, nutrition. November, weight loss journeys, sharing thankfulness about our journeys. December, holiday recipe exchange, holiday relapse preventions. So all the categories are actually really helpful. Um, you have so many different people with different experiences because not all journeys are the same. Um, another thing during the therapist um they ask questions on like your knowledge about the surgery like are you comfortable with 
knowing how much protein you need. Um, do you know what dumping syndrome is? Um, do you know you have to take vitamins? Do you know how much um, liquid intake you need and how much, you know, it keeps going on and on. And at the end, she would go over the list and she would pick randomly what's dumping syndrome. And you had to explain to her what that is. Then you had to answer how prepared are you and how successful do you think you will be with VSG and it was a scale from zero being the greatest and 10 being the worst and I put between two and three and she asked me why do you think you're so um so down on the, the scale that you think you're so prepared and that you think you're gonna be successful. My thing is, I have done research on Google, I have watched so many YouTube videos, hence why I'm gonna make my little vlog videos or helpful videos and see if I can help anybody else because those were great, those were so helpful. Um, I have my bariatric binder that they give you this is gonna be your Bible I've kept everything that I've gotten so far through all my appointments even the printouts at the end of my appointments I kept in here to keep track of like my weight loss and how my health's gone and I told her another thing is I'm not 100% sure I'm going to succeed but I'm not so far on the scale that I'm gonna fail because I've done my research, I'm gonna push myself. And because I know there's gonna be roadblocks and hurdles, but I don't know what they're gonna be. I know there will be some, I just can't tell you what they're gonna be yet until I come to them. Everybody's journey is different. Everybody's surgery is different, everybody's intakes different everybody's body is different everybody's mental stability is different and mindfulness of anything and everything so yeah there's gonna be troubles there's gonna be days that I might feel like what did I do to myself how am I gonna get through this but then when I get past that I'm gonna be like that was nothing look where I am today from where I started and that's going to be the greatest thing ever because I'm going to start at the bottom, work my way up to where I can be the best mom, the best wife, the best daughter, the best cousin, the best niece, nephew, aunt, everything, friend, everything that I can think of. I'm going to try my best. And that's all we all can do is just do our best and be our best. I recommend if they give you a binder to keep everything through your journey, all your research, keep it in here. I've kept so much stuff, even when I went to health fairs recently and I kept everything that might help me with my weight loss journey. I, I mean, Another thing you can do is, um, if they don't give you a binder, get a little notebook. I got this little notebook from the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And basically, I just write down the different places that I can get help from, um, my pounds that I've lost different with my last um, class we did nutrition so I wrote down all different little things like they were telling us that we can eat um, they said you don't have to eat breakfast food for breakfast you can eat tuna fish or if you want eat an egg salad on whole wheat toast 
Um, I wrote down low-fat cheese sticks, cottage cheese. Make sure you get whey isolated powder. Tuna packs with a hard-boiled egg is great for protein. Whole grain crackers with tuna on it. Um, chicken salad with crackers. And snacks are not for snacks is something that I learned. You don't get a... You can't eat nearly what you eat now. So the more nutrition you can get, instead of eating like a snack, you eat tuna fish or um, like the tuna fish with crackers and things like that. Um, make sure you eat lean meat, which is animals, shrimp, fish. Deer is great for protein and it tastes better and it's so no grease. That is my favorite thing to cook with for dinner. Um, low fat dairy, soy based food, 10 to 15 grams per snack for protein. And you want 20 plus per meal. And fish is one of the greatest things you can eat as well. Just little things like that. And just keep a notebook. And then also I have a journal that every once in a while I'll write down how I'm feeling, things going on. Um, just to look back on to see how far I've come, to see where I started mentally, physically, emotionally, and watch how I blossom. I can't wait to see what my future holds. This can be my breakthrough. Like I said, there's gonna be ups and downs. I'm hoping more ups than anything. Another thing is, is always make sure you carry water with you no matter what appointment you go to because every appointment I go to, they question me. They'll say, did you forget your water in your car or did you not bring one at all? What I do is I bring a purse big enough to where my water can fit down inside of it. And I take this, sorry, I got it stuck in my purse and it rips on the zipper, but I carry this to every single appointment, every appointment. I took it even when I went to um, the hospital to do like my blood work, um, to get um, my breath tests, my ultrasounds, ex everything, just everything, anything that I went to regarding my bariatric surgery, I took this with me in case there was any papers that I would get or even sometimes sitting in the waiting room I would pick up little pamphlets that I thought could be helpful and I would stick them in here and yeah I just this is gonna be my little bariatric Bible for the rest of my life it has so much information so yeah but I guess that's everything for now I guess I'll see you guys in the next video all right, thank you.